Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at conditional probabilities so we can answer questions from exercise 2b. So this is an introduction to conditional probability where we're going to be working out conditional probability from a table. Um, and it works like this. We have a, a new symbol that is basically a vertical line that reads like this. Um, the probability of b given that a is true. So effectively you read it from the back. Given that A is true, what is the probability of B? And for independent events, it doesn't matter whether A is true or not. The probability of B, if A is true, is just the probability of B. That's a much better way of explaining independent events in my point of view. From my point of view, probability of A, given that B is true, is equal just to just the probability of B. It doesn't matter whether A is true or not, the probability of B is still the probability of B. Effectively, the probability of A doesn't affect the probability of B. Let's have a go at a question here. A school of 75 students in year 12. Of the students, 25 only study humanities subject H and 37 only study science subjects S. 11 students study both types of subjects. Draw a two-way table for this information. So we're going to have probability of uh, studying humanities or not, probability of studying science or not, and we have totals for both of those as well. So 11 students study science and humanity type subjects, uh, 25 only study humanities type subjects. So that's going to be, um, yeah, 37 will be the students who only study science-based subjects and not humanities. 25 study humanities but not science based subjects. We know that this total must add up to 75 in both of the directions here. So it must be the case that this number here is uh, 2. So to make sure that this column here adds up to 27 and to make sure that this row here, uh, or this column here, adds up to 39 as well. And let's work out some probabilities. Find out the probability of not studying a, a, a science and not studying a humanity. So that is the two people there who don't study uh, a science or a humanity. And the next one is a probability, a conditional probability question. Find the probability that someone is a science-based subject, studies science, given that they are a humanities student. So we are now only looking at the humanities students. You can ignore now the rest of these types of people here. We're now working out of a probability of only 36. And we want to find the probability that this student studies science, and that is uh, 11 students out of a total of 36 that do study humanities. So in this case here, it's going to be um, just from that block there, it's going to be 11 out of 36 as the answer there. Part D is find the probability that someone is a humanities student given that they are not a science student. So read it from the back. They're not a science student. What's the probability they study humanities? So you can then look at your table and they are not going to be a science student. So you are now only looking out of these 27 students. And the question is, what's the probability they are hu a humanities student? Well, that would be 25. So it's 25 out of 27 there as the final answer for this question. Moving on to one more question. Two four-sided dice are thrown together and the sum of them are recorded. Draw a sample space diagram showing the possible outcomes. So this would be the sample space. Given that at least on one dice lands on a three, find the probability that the sum of the two dice is exactly five. So we now know for sure that at least one of the dice adds, uh, sorry, lands on a three. So we can now only look at these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven options here. This one we can ignore, 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 ignore these two, this one and this one. So what is the probability that the total sum is exactly 5? Well, in two of those cases, the sum was exactly um, 5. So therefore, it's going to be a, um, a 2 out of 7 probability. 
states one modeling assumption used in your calculations that both dice are unbiased, which means the outcomes are equally likely. Okay, so your turn to have a go at a question here then. Pause the video and try this question out. Right then, let's get started on this table then. So we've got boys, girls, and we've got some people who like... Uh, we have boys, girls, and we need a total. And we also have the three flavoured ice creams. Uh, so we'll need a total column at the end of that as well. So this is our table, and we're going to have uh, vanilla, strawberry, chocolate. Okay, so let's get started. Of the 45 girls, so we have a girl's total of 45. We have 13 who like vanilla, 12 who like chocolate, and the rest like strawberry. Well, that's going to add to 25, so the rest of them are going to be 20. Uh, of the boys, uh, so we know how many boys there are left because there's 80 children, so there's going to be 35 boys. Um, we know that, oops, 35 boys. We know that there are going to be two who like vanilla, 23 that like strawberry, and there's going to be 25 of those, so 10 boys will like chocolate. Lovely, so let's crack on then. Find the probability that a uh, if someone likes strawberry, that they are a boy. So it's going to be out of the strawberry likers. So how many people like strawberry? Let's add these columns together then. Let's do 43 and 22. Uh, so there are going to be 43 people that like strawberry. So that's what it's going to be out of. Effectively, you can always do that. Take the second thing, and that's what it's going to be out of. You could effectively do it as boy out of strawberry and treat the line as kind of like a fraction. So we're only looking at the strawberry people and then what's the probability of it being a boy? 23. So 23 out of 43 is your answer here. Next question, probability that it's a girl given that they are uh, someone who likes vanilla. So vanilla will be out of 15 and then what's the probability it's going to be a girl out of this vanilla column? 13 out of 15. And then what's the probability it's going to be a boy? So, so what's the probability it's going to be a chocolate fan uh, if we know that it is a boy? So we know that it's going to be a boy, so it's only out of this row now, so that's out of 35. And the probability that it's someone who is a fan of chocolate, that's going to be 10. And we can simplify that to 2 out of 7. So there we are, that's how we do conditional probability. Effectively what we're doing here is we're giving you some information about the um, probability of this person, what is the probability that it has a second condition attached to it. So it's generally going to be a, a fraction um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be out of the second uh, variable there. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 2b. We are going to now move on and do this conditional probability with Venn diagrams and tree diagrams, so make sure you've got it sussed with just bog standard tables. Thanks very much for watching. Ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much.